Hello, everybody. Um, I will present uh, a study conducted in conjunction between the University of Virginia and the Carlo Beste Institute uh, in Milan, supported by the Focus Ultrasound Foundation, <clears throat> about uh, the role of a quantitative analysis of in vivo microbubble distribution in the human brain, uh, conducted on uh, data obtained using contrast enhanced ultrasound, uh, performed during neurosurgical procedures. I have no disclosures. <clears throat> so, uh, microbubbles, as you know, were developed in the 70s as uh, uh, ultrasound enhancers and have been using them uh, through a craniotomic uh, window during neurosurgical procedures for surgical guidance. And they allow uh, real time non destructive uh, imaging. Uh, as you all know, microbubbles are used also uh, for therapeutic purposes namely blood brain barrier opening and uh, uh, also uh, microbubble enhanced ablation. Uh, however, <clears throat> the, the distribution of the microbubble is still not well understood, therefore treatment volumes are still small and uh, the procedures are time consuming. Uh, we cannot hear the microbubble where we do not know where they are and uh, <clears throat> therefore uh, we um, decided to try to understand the distribution of microbubble performing uh, the study. First of all, performing, understanding the feasibility of a quantitative analysis, and then uh, performing a quantitative analysis on different, different brain structures in order to understand uh, the microbubble dynamics, uh, hopefully leading to uh, tailored uh, microbubble and uh, mediated treatments. So we uh, decided to start this study relying on uh, a qualitative observation that we did uh, on our more than 600 procedures uh, in human, uh, where we observed clearly that uh, <clears throat> different structure and different lesion have different amount of microbubble in time. So it is pretty uh, straightforward to understand how a glioblastoma here in this row has a higher number of microbubble compared to a low-grade glioma. And the same is true for uh, different uh, um, anatomical structures where you can see a difference here, for example, between artery and gray matter and uh, the uh, white matter. And this uh, uh, quantitative evaluation <clears throat> allows us to perform, the, uh, um, to perform an analysis of these time intensity curves and will provide uh, hopefully a better guidance for fast, fast therapies. So we analyzed data obtained in uh, 21 patients uh, undergoing surgery for uh, brain tumors. And in each uh, patient, we were able to uh, detect uh, three different regions of interest, an artery as a reference, then the brain tumor and a uh, brain structure, whether a basal ganglia or uh, white matter. And in all cases, we were able to obtain um, we performed with uh, our software uh, uh, a quantitative analysis obtaining time intensity curves. And the two parameters <clears throat> that we studied were peak of enhancement and R under the curve, which proved from a qualitative standpoint to be the most informing. We obtained uh, um, a uh, time intensity curve for all cases. Here you can see how the artery have a, has a higher peak compared to uh, the tumor in blue or the uh, brain parenchyma uh, in yellow. These uh, data show that uh, um, consistently differences between different structures um, were statistically significant across all tumor, both in terms of peak intensity value and in terms of uh, area under the curve. And uh, these are some uh, interesting cases which were not amenable for statistical uh, analysis, but we found out that different uh, white matter areas have different amount of microbubble, or we found differences also between uh, different structures such as basal ganglia and the white matter where the basal ganglia have more microbubble than the white matter, uh, the surrounding white matter. In some cases, the tumor had the same amount of microbubble compared to the basal ganglia. And also within the tumor, different uh, amount of microbubble uh, were visible, such as in this case of glioblastoma, where the necrotic center has a less bubble than the bulk of the tumor. 
In conclusion, quantitative analysis of <coughs> interoperative contrast and ultrasound is feasible and provide information about the microbubble distribution in time and space. Uh, we confirm that different brain structures and lesions have different microbubble dynamics and concentration. And uh, in the pipeline, we have uh, uh, the production of a microbubble map uh, of the brain to ultimately be coupled with BBB outcome and provide the information for fast treatments. Thank you for your attention.